What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 7 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, another quest battle saw us acquire Mikhail Harkin, and uh, I'm pretty darn excited to try him out on the field as well as his uh, ghostly boys. We got the first one in the army of Zacharias, and I guess those will be the elites that stay with Harkin, while well, Zacharias holds units of Graveguard, and along with uh, uh, along with some Bloodkin aspirants as well, or uh, Blood Dragon neophytes as well, which I think is what we're going to do with this particular army. Speaking of what we're doing with this particular army, and uh, sort of related to naming units, I think I'm gonna uh, get a big blob of names in there, either between this episode and the next one, or maybe next episode, depending on if I forget or not. I'm starting to see the armies come together in a sense that uh, I now am started to decide who is going to get what units, and that's generally when I like to add names, because until now, I haven't been super sure. Sure. Uh, also, between the episodes, I did take care of a little bit of admin, sending a bunch of or transferring a bunch of units from Aberash's army to Anarch von Karstein so that we can get him fighting on field as fast as possible. Exciting times, and we just need to rack up eight more blood kisses to get the Abyssal Revenant on the field as well. Anyway, in terms of what we gotta do this turn, I don't believe there's much, if anything, left. We're going to end the turn, we're going to... I guess proceed and hunt down whoever's in range, so let's end the turn and let's get going. Alright, and while the turn is ending, once again we did reach the engagement threshold, so we're going for the hour-long episode this time around, and once again the offer does continue to stand 400 likes and 50 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well. Lewin wants peace, but is only willing to offer us a mere 300 dark magic, and thus we're not going to bother. With that, we'll wait until he's willing to offer us a decent chunk of change to give him a 10-turn reprieve. Uh... A recruiting surplus? Wow, I wish that that had happened before I recruited all those units uh, to Aberash's army and wasted like, I don't know, 8,000 gold or 10,000 gold? Oh well. We're definitely gonna get that. The War Fervor doesn't really help us that much. So we'll do this. Ooh, Karazakarak has been destroyed. That's not great. Another lord that we uh, uh, that we won't be getting the defeat trade of, though I'm not nearly as salty about that as I am about Kazrak, that Vanguard deployment. Oh well. Oh well. We will overcome, I suppose. Uh, not that... Uh, not that Aberash needs the crutch of Vanguard deployment, I guess. Uh, anyway, we got a new tech up and running, and I believe... Let's see, March of Darkness will give us missile resistance for all Ordo Draconis units. I'm kind of tempted to just start moving through all Ordo Draconis techs. Mostly because we have more of them than we have anything else. The other option is this. Spell Swords right here is a pretty darn big buff to all Bloodkin. But to get there, Hero Action Cost is basically useless, and Hero Recruit Rank is... Kind of meh, at least for now. Uh, two isn't a big enough deal, and I don't think we have a lot of stuff that we can stack it with, which is the problem. But spell swords is really nice. Mm. I guess the question is, is it nicer than being able to get lances and whatever the missile resistance and speed is for the Order of Draconis units? Well, you know what, let's, let's start moving it, moving towards it. For now, and then we'll see in a little bit. We'll oh, figure it out. It. Anyway, Aberash, you are headed to Karak Kadrin now, uh, so uh, continue to do so, please. And uh, grab this worthy uh, foe encounter. Somewhere. We'll be fighting another one of these shortly as well, so keep that in mind. Ride to battle. And we'll give this a read uh, once we actually fight it or right before. Uh, fighting it, and we're facing Cathians this time around, but I wouldn't trust what this says, because it's, uh, judging by the previous quest, it likes to lie. Aberash, move all the way out here. And, hmm, I may have to send Anarch to follow you a little bit. Or recruit some of those. Wait, you need to build this, but we don't have the metal for it. We need to acquire it ASAP while we have the recruitment cost reduction. So we can get those adept thralls on the field, or the uh, knights. Hmm. Certainly something to think about. Anyway, uh, Wallach and Edmund and Waldemar. Alright, let's see if we can do this right. Waldemar, you're gonna go here. 
And Edmund, you are going to go into encamp stance and you're going to trade him units. Just trying to get the appropriate units that we want in every army. You're going to trade away the Skelly Boys and all but four of the Bloodkin. You're going to take four Graveguard with great weapons and then you're going to recruit four from Wallach's army. I think that's right. All right, so like that. All right, Wallach, you are going to move in and camp stand so you can allow our ass to keep recruiting. Don't go out to sea as yet, though. Because I think if you're at sea, your circle won't work anymore. Although it might, I'm not entirely sure, but I'd rather not risk the turn, so yeah. Uh, let's get you some Graveguard like so. And that'll max out this army, as this is going to be, by and large, our Graveguard and Black Knight's army, with the monstrous Drakenhof Templar Skyreavers as the sort of ringers of this army, or the uh, retinue of Edmund von Sinclair, which should be a pretty fun time. I'm excited to see how these guys function, and uh, I like the idea of having a Graveguard and Black Knight army as well, just so that we don't rely on all uh, super elites. Anyway, Zacharias, I see Gelt is nearby. Still got primarily basic troops, but frankly, your army has like nothing in it. Uh, didn't you have a... yeah, successfully use a hero action with this character. What's the likelihood that you can do this? 46%? Ugh, not great. What about here, Carl? 48%, slightly better. Damage walls is decently likely, it's just that he's not there. And, oh, there's another full stack. Damn. Uh, we might have to send one of these armies back here to deal with Geld. Actually, Aberash would like to deal with Geld, but that's not going to happen. Mm. 46. I mean, we could give this a try. Uh, you better not be immediately wounded. Alright, give it a try. Oh, he succeeded. Well, very, very nice. All right, I'm happy with that. Uh, now we don't have to worry about that. Stronger binding for Graveguard units in the zone. Why is it red? It's kind of freaking me out. I guess everything is uh, red with this guy. Anyway, let's get you the hunger. And we'll get you spells and stuff afterwards. But Zacharias does have spells, so he can take care of that himself for a while. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Now that was Zac Anarch. You... I mean... There isn't really much for you to do at the current time. I th think we can just sort of raid our own territory for a little bit. And to get the additional metal that we need. And, and, oh, that won't give us enough, will it? We need nine. We'll be one short. I guess if we raise Karakadrin, that'll give us what we need. Hmm. Probably going to have to be the way to do it. I really want those uh, recruits up and running cheaper than they currently are, and I'm sure Anarch wants them as well. Anyway, I believe that's it for this turn. Very quick one. Uh, but fine by me, as it allows us to head towards our other elites and stuff. And Scrag the Slaughterer, let me guess you want peace now. Oh, I'm willing to offer 3k for it. I think we'll take it. We'll take it and then we'll uh, redeclare war on you, but now that we have the defeat trade on Aberash, we don't care nearly as much about you, at least not until you're an actual threat to us. And hopefully you eventually will be. Also gotta keep an eye on Middenheim, because Heinrich Kemmler is kind of hanging around here. He's taken uh, Middenstag or whatever the uh, territory is here. It is Middenstag. A great worthy act, Waldemar Ratap, and confederation between Clan Angrin and Carrick Hearn. We do want to defeat Belagar as well, so that'll be nice. Carl, hanging around still, I see. You know what, I'll let him take some of the ruins, it's fine. Maybe he'll get stronger and become a worthy foe, as it were. Edmund. I... Balthy's moving down here. He's probably mm, wary of these guys all. Mikhail, you can head back into Zacharias's army, and I guess you'll go for replenish troops, at least for now. You don't have any other heroes to call upon anyway. Uh, since these guys have moved away, you're kind of safe here. And you can sort of hang around. Waldemar and Edmund. Maybe we send Edmund to protect Heinrich, Ke or protect Heinrich, Ke protect Middenheim, Middenheim for now. Although, to be fair, Waldemar could do it too. I actually wanted to transfer some of his graveguard to Zacharias. But I fear, wait, Wallach, there's no way that you can reach the... Hmm, maybe you can. Might not be able to recruit if we can actually reach the... Ooh. We've got armies here as well. But, uh, well, well, we'll find armies elsewhere. 
Can you get into this? Yes, you can. Abyssal Traverse of Abyssal Riptide. All right. Uh, select a Riptide to traverse to it. Now, I think we're going to send Aberash to Lamia. Hmm. Wasn't there another one here, or is this one not unlocked? Wait. There's this one here. There's this one here. Oh, I guess we need to beat the tier 4 to unlock this one. Yeah, we'll leave Lamia for now. Let's, uh, uh, let's send Harkin to Harkin, shall we? Traverse. Alright, well, Harkin's gone, so you guys will hopefully uh, be able to uh, act on your own now. Uh, wait a moment, Deborah, you're in range oh, now, ain't you? I don't see the Slayer King, though. Mm. Bit of a shame. Does that Orky army get destroyed? Not really much in the way of defenders here. First of the blood dragons. Who are you at war with? Ah, uh, you're at war with the Bone Rattlers, so we'll ask them to declare war on you and get the money. And then we'll uh, <laughs> declare war on them. Or ask them uh, for another war declaration on somebody else. Because it's amusing. Alright, go here. I believe the Slayer King is in debt. Ooh, Pyrrhic victory. Looks like the game wants us to actually fight this. Alright, well, I guess we're gonna have to do so. Uh, is this worth the cinematic fight? I think we'll save the cinematic fight for the actual difficult fight that is before us. Meaning the fight for whichever quest battle we fight. And we still need at least one more medal to take advantage. Damn. Can anybody raise anything or get medal? I think we're going to be forced... Ooh, wait. Can we declare war on you again? One turn, eh? Damn. Alright. I mean, I guess we could break the... Yeah, no, no, no. Abrash wouldn't appreciate that. Uh, can't do it. Can't do it. Alright, Edmund, I guess you're going southward to deal with some of these armies. Although, once the Witch Hunter threats spawn, we need an actual proper stack now. You know what? I think you have to go up north to Middenheim. And suffer a little bit of attrition. Ah, you know what? Just move up there. No, I don't. I don't want to risk it. Move in march stance. Uh, the reason I figured I don't want to risk it is because what if Heinrich Kemmler decides to attack Middenheim? And I'd really rather not lose all the growth that it's been going through. Uh, Waldemar, you're heading southward to briefly join Zacharias, or at least swap units around. And nobody here can build Graveguard anymore, so we will need to build the, or upgrade the building here as soon as we have the requisite growth, but that'll take a little bit. Uh, Zach, you can stay where you are. I could actually raid with you, you know what, go here. And raid. And glory. There we go. Alrighty, Abarasha, let's uh, get to you fighting a little bit. Let's do it cinematically, just for fun. Alrighty, away we go. Looks like Aberash is going to immediately get targeted by some quarrelers and towers, but they're no threat uh, to him. He's a small target and he has a barrier and lots of resistances. On top of that, though, I don't think he has any missile or physical resist and just the ward save, but uh, it's more than enough. Anyway, he's going to come down and start hunting that enemy lord pretty much immediately, if he can actually find him in here. And looks like the lord will book it on out of there leaving some dwarf warriors but we can clear them out with that enraged scream or whatever that ability was called something along a range battle cry close enough and continue chasing after that enemy lord who will go to a new pile of his minions to try to hide you're a dwarf lord, my friend. You're supposed to just fight. I guess it is a rune lord, so uh, he's going to be a little bit more skittish in terms of getting a duel going. Anyway, Aberesh will give chase, but the rest of our army is on the approach. We're sending zombies up the walls. I was doing this in the hopes of being able to immediately summon units up here uh, inside the settlement, but alas, that didn't seem to work out. And that's all right, though. We have other means. We can climb the walls and break through the gate as well. Plenty of options to be had. Anyway, it looks like Aberash is still in giving chase to the enemy lord and is going to cast a few things just to make sure that enemy units that are of the uh, 
have the range of variety and don't get to freely attack wherever they can. And very nice, very nice. Looks like decent damage to that one unit of Thunderers and it destroyed their barrier as well, so no more hiding for them, at least in that manner. It looks like some of the enemy Dwarf Warriors will sally out and right into our units of Disciples of the Path, which is not the place they want to be. They're going to get absolutely wrecked here. I'm actually not sure why they're doing this. Maybe they just want to prevent us from continuing to attack the gates, so... They're achieving that, but uh, they're achieving that through us attacking them instead, and they're going to get obliterated out here. Swing away with those glaives, and here come a little bit in the way over here come some units to help out, some reinforcements, that's the word I was looking for. And these poor dwarf warriors are going to get surrounded and destroyed. There we go, quite quickly I might add. Back to the gate with some of you, but up to the walls. With the rest we do send some blood dragon neophyte warriors up here, and it looks like some units of iron drakes are going to target them. Aberash has finally destroyed the enemy lord, though they continue getting in his way and he keeps casting them away. So that he can finish off the duel, or finish off the enemy lord, how dare you run? Hey, where'd he go? See, if, yeah, he's flying, flying over the building. There we go, the dwarf uh, loses his head for running. Alright, now the uh, Blood Dragon Neophyte Warriors are in the fray, facing off against some Dwarf Warriors. Absolutely atrocious matchup for the Dwarf Warriors in particular, as we've got great swords to penetrate their armor, and we're much, much more killy than they are. I'm just watching the unit have uh, have some fun here. Especially as I believe one of them got killed by the Iron Drakes. Yeah, they're 27 out of 28 there. We'll get them back up and healed, but uh, for now... Damn, love those splash attacks. Watch all those uh, Slayers and Dwarf Warriors go flying. And then we do still have to watch out for the Slayers as they are fast attacking and high damage dealers. And there's the, uh, uh, there's the passive on these guys, getting them a little bit healed up. And more reinforcements on the way as well. We've got our first unit of Disciples of the Path up the walls as well, since the zombies failed to do their job. Their job mostly, once again, being allowing us to summon some units, but we did eventually manage to summon the uh, Phantoms of the First Keep anyway. And they're going to have to distract plenty of enemy range units. But that's pretty much what they always do. Anyway, back into the fray here. We'll watch our uh, melee troops and do their thing now. Nice charge from the Disciples of the Path as the enemy Dwarf Warriors and Slayers get crushed between the Blood Dragon Neophytes and the Disciples there. It's a bloody battlefield, but alas for the Dwarfs, we're not losing much in the way of units at this rate. And we're still not through those gates, but it looks like we've captured the gates instead, so we don't need to break through them anyway. Lovely. Alright, and the last of those Dwarf Warriors get destroyed and more of our units stream into the city. The Death Guard Deck Watchers uh, move in. The other anti-large is not going to be useful in this particular battle. That's alright. All right, and some more brave dwarf warriors after seeing what happened to their companions and especially the slayers and attempt to hold the ground. Uh, though essentially they're fighting in a pretty bad location as we're fighting with an elevation advantage on top of all that. And the battle should be ours relatively soon. The balance of power is at about 70% in our favor. Looks like a zombie unit It gets ripped apart by some iron drakes, but not to worry, the phantoms of the first keep will take care of the iron drakes. Tactically, not much to say in uh, this particular battle. It's just a good old-fashioned siege. We were not fighting in uh, too many locations at once, so and just got to break through the enemy choke points. Anyway, nice charge from our units, and it looks like those Iron Drakes are down to nearly half HP. They have called some Slayers and to apply their uh, anti-large and damage to the Phantoms, but the Phantoms are more or less going to be fine. Aberash in the lead with the rest of our piles of vampires. Empires have pretty much cleared out the enemies that were blocking them, and now it'll be just this main square area that we have to destroy. And by the looks of it, the Phantoms of the First Keep with their splash attacks are absolutely wrecking dwarf face. 
And there we go, just a little bit more, and I'm sure at the very least the dwarf warriors will rout. Of course, the slayers will have to be killed into a dwarf, but we're used to it. All right, and here come our melee reinforcements. Oh, that poor Iron Drake. <laughs> oh, man, that, uh, that unit got absolutely ripped apart by one of the disciples. That did not look pleasant. But hey, at least they didn't suffer long. Ah, once again, I love these ones with the uh, full armor plate combination. You gotta wear your helmets, even if you're a vampire. <laughs> uh. Alright, just a little bit more and I do believe the main army has now shattered and we just have to break uh, the slayers apart and break them we shall. Those death blows don't appear to be helping them too much. And I believe this is the last unit of slayers remaining on the... No, there is another one over here as well that Aberash has found. All right, well, we haven't seen him uh, fighting this particular battle too much. Mostly because we've seen him fight plenty of times already. Gonna get that enraged scream once again as soon as the uh, runners uh, come in. You gotta punish them for running after all. And just got to get rid of the last of the Slayers. Damn, that's a lot of damage resistant bonuses when he uses his abilities. Of course, they are all not super necessary as the Slayers are unlikely to even break through his barrier at this point. But they might be able to kill off a few of the uh, Bloodkin Thralls if they try. So we do want to watch out about that and thus we'll give them a little bit of healing to make sure that the Bloodkin are topped up. And it's dual weapons versus dual weapons here. I wonder how a, a unit of Bloodkin Thralls would fare against a Slayer unit one-on-one. -on -one. I'm willing to bet that the Slayers would win the contest. Without heals, at the very least. A different story with heals, but the Slayers do quite a bit of damage when we let them, though in this particular case. Let them. We did not. Another decisive victory for Rabaresh, and we continue on our way to find the Slayer King for a duel. Ungrim is always a very, very difficult lord to bring down, so I'm excited to actually find him and get a proper fight between the two. All right, there we go. Easy enough, no problem at all. A little bit of damage to our units, but all healed up and raised back up. Now we have... Ooh, we have to sacrifice 4.5... Uh, 4.7k in order to get the metal, huh? Hmm. But I guess metal is more valuable than gold. To some degree. And I want to be able to build up the thing this turn. Yeah, fine, fine. We'll sacrifice the gold. Or favor, or dark magic, whatever it's being called here. Anyway, hopefully Krakadrin isn't destroyed. They have, yeah, two more settlements, so hopefully the Slayer King is all the way over there. Hopefully he doesn't loop around to go for Anarch, but, uh, well, who knows. What I want to do is immediately build up the Thrall Tents. Tent and keep Anarch reasonably nearby so that... He can... Ooh. Well, that's not good. Uh... Hmm. <laughs> what if he gets attacked by Vlad? Wait, we pieced out approximately... How many turns until we can redeclare war on him? It doesn't even say this time around. Oh, because we have the non-aggression pact. Yeah, it's unlikely that he'd just immediately break it. He'll probably break it later, but for now, I guess Anarch should be safe. We can thus also forego the upgrade of his uh, uh, Drakenhof Templars for now, though we will, of course, do it in a little bit. Anyway, uh, rest of that looks good to me. Zach, you cannot move until you get reinforcing units, and then you will be good to go, more or less. Until we replace them anyway, but for now you'll be good. Anyway, uh, that looks like an end turn to me. The more turns we end, the quicker we unlock the Abyssal Revenant, and the quicker we arrive in the new world with uh, 
uh, with Wallach Harkin. We will get a nice Harkin versus Harkin duel. Alright, and he will end their non-aggression pact, ha! Huh? <laughs> but he won't immediately declare war on us, but that's alright. I will just erase and destroy his stuff. Sorry, Vlad, I was, uh, I was perfectly happy. Oh, raise dead cost, that's not gonna be useful, is it? Because we don't have access to it. I guess war forever this time around. Ambusher discovered. Yeah, Balthazar Gelt is hanging around knowing that he can't take Nuln over. Well, as long as he doesn't get destroyed, we're fine. Anyway, let's continue through this. A bloodline of legends and then on to spell sword for that sweet, sweet upgrade. Uh, we Still want to... Alright, Anarch, you need to stay in hidden outposts like this. Hopefully we... D oh. Upgrade the Templar Citadel here. Damn, we don't have as much money as we'd like. All right, but nonetheless, we need you to recruit some knights from Abarash's army, which means Abarash, you need to stay close enough and in camp stance so that an Anarch can keep recruiting. And, okay, we're good. And I still don't see Ungrim. Huh. Well, hopefully by the time we get here, he'll revive. I also would love to see Azag, but... Hmm, we'll see. I'd love to upgrade you, but we need to... What? Military chain buildings are required for local recruitment. Ah. Uh, Bloodkin Thrall Adept Knights are available to you. We can't build them from Abarash's army? Well, that's interesting. I wonder why that is. I guess it's going to take two turns anyway. All right, well, that's not going to work. All right, fine, fine, fine. Uh, we'll still want to recruit them, but I guess we'll want to transfer them to another army, and we won't be able to take advantage of the recruiting surplus then. I mean, I guess it's only 25%, but still. I was really hoping Anarch could do it. Hmm. I'm not sure why he can't. He is in the Circle of Influence, and Abarush is in an camp stance, but oh well. Alright, I guess Abarush, then you're free to switch to March stance and move far as you can here. Or at least a little bit further, and then Anarch, you can return to Castle Drakenhof in preparation for the next Witch Hunter attack. Alright, Wallach, you are stuck traveling. Waldemar, you are going to go into... Eh, I was gonna... I was gonna hope to pop him into Raiding stance, but I guess not this turn. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, let's get Zacharias's army up and running properly. Uh, let's see. We're going to want to trade all this. These will become Blood Dragon and Neophytes, and the elites will be Ghosties. We'll keep the Spears, but take out all of these infantry units. And that leaves him with 19 out of 20. Hmm. I guess we could temporarily use Black Knights in his army, though at the same time... Maybe not needed. Ah, keep the two. Keep the two. And then 19 out of 20 will leave him room for one unit uh, or one additional hero. Although, will we need another additional hero? It, he probably should have a Blood Dragon champion. I feel wrong not to. Anyway, I guess you can channel here for a turn and then you can return briefly to Middenheim for a while. Speaking of Middenheim, we got a couple more turns until we're ready to go for that Abyssal Bastion. But we do gotta get Edmund up here so that he can keep an eye on it. Hmm. I don't like how there's two armies nearby. You know what? I'm not going to risk it. Go into encamp stand up. You're going to go into regular stance and stay near Middenheim. Or in Middenheim, I guess. Plus, you can at least remain at full HP in this manner. We'll probably declare war on Kemmler just to start racking up XP on Edmund and to start raising these territories around for metal. And because of the aversion that these guys have to us, they'll probably eventually declare war on us anyway, so... Might as well uh, do it preemptively. All right, building upgrades available. That's an Anarch's army, but for now, I think we'll forego it. Just got to make sure we don't get him killed. I was really banking on those extra units, but oh well. Uh, what we can do is we can have another Lord recruited following Abarash around and use him as... Oh, unless his recruitment camp thing doesn't work. I guess we'll test it out again. Uh, unassigned skill points, send turn. We used it just fine with Wallach, a little bit odd that we didn't really work with Abarash, but oh well. Hopefully I just did something wrong and then we'll still be able to do it, and Anarch, I just saw you get out of encampment stance. 
Maybe I should have put you in rating stance instead. In fact, I definitely should have put you in a rating stance, whatever. Uh, you need to return to Kessel Drakenhof, sir. I also don't trust it, though, so move in and camp while you do. I don't trust the Vlad not to hit you with three stacks while you're not yet ready for it. Income from raiding, yaddy yaddy, ambush foiled. Good, Eberush, you're heading to Nashrax Slayer, who are only at war with Karak Kadren. Where is the Slayer King? No oh, he doesn't want to peace out. Speaking of peacing out, uh, Zufbar, nearly dead, are willing to give us 2.3k? Yeah, sure, you can live. Agreed. We're not looking to d absolutely just destroy everyone, that's not really the point here, so, yeah. And Aberash certainly isn't uh, running around trying to wipe everybody out. Uh, mentor for you, sir. And I guess we're probably going to be good enough to attack an enemy, or not an enemy, uh, attack a quest battle shortly. Attack value 3.8k. That's not bad. We do need the money. All right, let's declare war on these guys. They're not in a defensive alliance with anybody either. And we still have to get to the library up here. So we will have to get a new lord to defend that library anyway. How to resolve this is probably going to hurt our army, but nah. And this time... Ah, oh, it's four metal now, but this time sack it. We're just completely out of money to the point that we can't really recruit, which is a problem. Uh, and camp stands here to heal back up, best as you can. And then... Ah, another potion of healing, very nice, fine. You're able to raise lords around, JH. Ooh, we got another vampire thrall available, but... Uh, hmm... All right, I think what we're going to do now is this. Uh, go to orders. No, go to rewards of dread. And then we're going to grab the... It's going to take a lot of our valor, but, uh, well, I want... Man, we want this. Purchase, 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 so that all new lords start at level 15, which is what I should have done with Anarch, and then 3,000 gold for another army capacity. Damn. We're not gold, uh, martial valor. It's a little much. But it'll at least prevent Abrash from having to waste his turn move uh, his turn of movement. Hmm. I mean, we'll have to get it eventually. That's the thing. It's just I wanted to save it to upgrade Anarch's uh, Anarch's Bloodkin. But I guess we'll get it back up and running as soon as that Witch Hunter threat is resolved. So it'll happen eventually either way. Fine, 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 fine. Uh, Rewards of Dread and Army Capacity plus one. All right, there it is. And we'll need it for the Abyssal Rem Revenant anyway. Then we'll get a new Lord. I guess the question is what kind of keep do we want at Mount Gunbed? Does it really matter? Probably not. I mean, in proximity, it'll still be close to you, so we could do another one of these here. Get another Drakenhof Templar Lord, although we have three of those now. Hmm. We have Stoic Violence on you. Do we have Eternal... I wanted to see if anybody had disdain. I mean, nobody does have it. I guess we could get a free one, but they're only, uh, only level one, which is kind of a waste. But I guess we could replace them after. Yeah, we could do that too. You know what? Let's get the free one for now. XP doesn't really matter. He's mostly here just to make sure that uh, Brush doesn't waste his turn. Just out of curiosity, you can't recruit, can you? Blood and prowess. And other Zacharias as well. The uh, Blood Dragons certainly like those Zacks. Anyway. Uh, okay, I was hoping that would be Gorok, but that's okay. Helkeek, I see the rats are still around. How's the Awakening looking? It is still belonging to Luther Harkin. Uh, but sadly, no Harkin versus Harkin by the looks of it, as he's not up. Uh, you are currently at war with Itza. Itza. We will join war against the Awakened. For money. And then we will strike. Possibly this turn, depending on if we can land. And land we can. Oh, you guys have no defenses. Okay, fine. <laughs> they were going to lose that anyway, pretty clearly. Uh, let's get the Lichbone Pendant on you, because you cast a lot, and thus has a deep, have a decent chance, I guess, of miscasting. And pop the banner on the banner man. So, that makes sense. Out of resolve. Teensy bit of damage, but no big deal. And we are going to construct a blood keep of the Ordo Profundum here. Lovely. All right, Razor Standard for us, and Mount Hellsteed on Bethilda Daimyo. Short victory achieved. Casual two punishment rate increase for all armies. Oh, that's lovely. We wanted that. It's not constant, but it is still very, very useful. 
All right. And, oh, I should have checked that uh, this only goes back down to level one, but oh well. Ah, gotta love the Lord recruit ranks that these offer as well, and the quests that they will eventually unlock. Wallach, you can also now afford, I think, your night quarters, so let's upgrade it. Just gotta watch out for the money, and we also have nine precious metal. I have been meaning to get this thing up and running in both ways. It's 5% faction wide. Yeah, let's spend the metal. All movement range is worth our time. Uh, order libraries now. All right, we have four left, about to be three as soon as we head to a gun bed. This is the lost library of Huatl. Deep within the ruins of the once great temple city of Huatl lies a hidden library that has been untouched for centuries. Its shelves are lined with ancient tomes and grimoires filled with knowledge and power beyond mortal comprehension. As the vampire coast took hold of the city, they soon discovered the library's existence and its potential value. Undead scholars and necromancers now roam its halls, pouring over the forbidden texts and performing dark rituals to unlock their secrets. The library's guardians, the restless spirits of the long-dead lizardmen, watch on in silent fury, unable to stop the intruders from plundering their sacred knowledge. The library has become a battleground of magic and necromancy as the vampire coast seeks to dominate its secrets and the lizardmen's spirits fight to preserve their lost civilization's the legacy. All right, uh, we can get more casualty punishment out of this, but I don't think we spend any money on that. And I guess next turn we're going for that quest battle. Zach, you cannot reach guilt. And you also can't you march stance, sadly. Mm. Alright, well, here's what we will do. Uh, Edmund, you will stay outside of Middenheim and raid for a little while. Uh, while the main lords sort of move. And then, Zach, you... I want you to catch guilt. Is guilt at war with anybody? He's at war with the bloody hands and then us. Hmm. Could get. Do, you don't have his defeat trait, do you? Uh, yeah, actually, you do. Metal Storm. I mean, I mean, it's only six armor, but uh, nonetheless. All right, fine. Just, just raid here for a little while. Both of you, just raid here for a little while. We'll uh, see the positioning of the enemies and we'll move them out eventually. But for now, I'm more excited about uh, activating all the keeps and getting the new lords up and running. So that seems to be the uh, more prioritized stuff. Uh, skip, skip, skip. I'm turn. Plus, if we end, like, 20 turns really quickly, we'll be able to fight much stronger enemies. Once again, I'm pretty excited about that concept. And... still no Ungrim. And there it is, Declaration of War. While in raiding stance, it looks like you, sir, are about to get attacked. Alrighty, this will definitely be a fight. Kemmler is a decent fighter. We have just Graveguard and Black Knights, and the enemy has their own piles of dead. We'll, we're going to struggle against Krell in particular. But anyway, it looks like we've got a, a good fight ahead of us. And we're winded as well. Good times. Go. Alrighty, here we go. It's interesting that our weakest army at the current time is going to face off against probably the most difficult fight we've had outside of the uh, quest battles, but we are damn outnumbered here. And on top of that, our army is primarily made up of Graveguard and non-veteran Graveguard at that, with low tiers between 1 and 2, and uh, they have no stats of upgrades out of the red lines and I believe the enemy's graveguard are better than ours and they have just as many of them as we do plus they have three stacks five or six lords depending or lords and heroes depending on if you count Krell and all their necromancers have master of the dead on them which means they heal everything around them and they have some elites like these hex wraiths over on this flank and the cairn wraiths over on this flank and just tons and tons of bodies more than a full stack of 
of skeletons of both of the warrior and spear variety and tons of zombies, it's going to be a nasty fight. Uh, let's see if we can pull it off. We're going to start the battle off with the Karen Wraiths facing off against, or the uh, Hex Wraiths rather, facing off against the Black Knights here. A little bit jealous of the Hex Wraiths as they're my favorite unit in the game, but uh, well, and they're going to have to fall here. Sadly, we don't have magical damage on the Black Knights and we'll have to destroy them the old-fashioned way, but we did pop a Staff of Damnation on our nightly blob, and by the looks of it, that was enough to heavily damage the Hex Wraiths, especially with a little bit of help from the Bloodkin Aspirants casting. Uh, looks like Krell went to see off the other unit of Black Knights and started heavily damaging them, so we're going to back them off. Even though they weren't able to quite finish off the Dire Wolves, at least they are crumbling away. The other three units of Black Knights that we have available are getting around the enemy army while our main forces engage. Now, at the front of the column, we have the Grave Guard in a relatively boxy formations with holes in the lines for the Bloodkin Thrall Warriors to move through and dish out the damage. The Bloodkin are uh, going to be a little bit less uh, tanky because they have less armor and no shields, although I suppose the shields won't matter too much due to the uh, lack of range units on the enemy, but certainly less armor. Although I suppose they do uh, have uh, the... Uh they do have the hunger on them to keep them nice and healed, though a lot less uh, a unit count as well, which is going to be dangerous when facing off against heroes in particular. If Corel moves into their lines, for example, he just keep knocking out models real quick, which is most definitely a problem. Anyway, we're allowing the enemy army to move in and set themselves up as we hold them up, and then we send the Bloodkin in to dish out the damage. Definitely want to knock out those Crypt Ghouls so that they don't apply poison to our lines. Over in the background, we have our Lord Edmund chasing Heinrich Kemmler around, but Kemmler doesn't seem to want to actually give uh, uh, and give us a fight, and we'll just continue to keep running away, which is annoying, and but not much we can do about it. Enemy reinforcements are arriving in massive numbers as well, and, well, that's going to be even more concerning, and we're going to have to be careful with their Black Knights. They are, after all, quite weak, and even against things like Skeleton Spears, they will get mobbed, and destroyed if we let them. So, a few cycle charges and then we gotta get them out rather than allowing them to die, especially as we will need all the mana we can get for this particular fight. It's only just begun. Now, another important aspect of this fight is that we can't really take Krell on. He would absolutely destroy our uh, Lord Edmund and our Bloodkin Aspirant even if they attacked him together. So, we're going to do our best to distract him for as long as we can. I Ideally, the entire battle with the uh, summons of zombies. Generally, the best way to deal with Corel in the early game and other similar sorts of things. Anyway, uh, a few of our uh, healthy units of Black Knights have arrived to help our Grave Guard out as they continue holding against the enemy zombie and the skeleton hordes. But this is only the starting army, and this is the first army, so it doesn't even have the Grave Guard piles that we're going to encounter. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Much, much worse. Balance of power is obviously in the enemy's favor, and the enemy has 40 units on the field already. And all these enemy reinforcements can't even get onto the field because there are too many units already fighting. And it's actually probably a good thing that the Crypt Horrors can't enter the fray right now because, uh, well, they would absolutely devastate our lines of Graveguard. We also have to remember that Graveguard aren't particularly strong uh, units, especially without the uh, sort of... Uh, uh, without the support monsters or monsters entities like the Corpse Cart and Mortis Engines and Necromancers that are normally present in Vampire Count's armies, our Graveguard are going to be a lot weaker by virtue of the lack of those, so their purpose to be an anvil to hold the line is, uh, well, a lot more difficult to achieve if they're significantly weaker as they are. 
as I said, going to be an interesting fight here. We're getting another uh, battle with the Karen Wrights, who have taken about half HP off a unit of Black Knights in Graveguard. They're in trouble again against the Karen Wrights, and once again, we just don't have the magic damage. Even our Thralls, we haven't acquired that Spell Sword upgrade as yet, and thus they don't have the magic damage either. And But at the very least, they are fine in terms of their HP for now. Granted, we are preserving them, because we're going to need them for the entire battle, so we can't be having them take all the hits. Certainly can't have them reach their healing caps early. Uh, looks like our Black Knights begin melting away, but the Invocation and the Heck did save them, and they did rally as they run, but the rest of the fight continues. Over in the background, our uh, Black Knights continue wheeling around. We did manage to trap one of the enemy Necromancers, and damn well was it necessary, as this is an unholy lodestone corpse cart, and we really don't want this thing anywhere near the enemy lines, as it will provide Vigor Mortis to buff everybody up, and the unholy lodestone healing, and the Master of the Dead that the Necromancer riding it has. I really wish that uh, units would automatically try to surround single entities, though. They really need to update the behavior of uh, units when ordered to attack a single entity. Otherwise, you have to babysit things too much. Like, you're, you've been told to attack this cart. You shouldn't have to be told to uh, move around it like this in order to try to trap it. There you go. Alright, just a little bit of babysitting for you. Hopefully we can keep that corpse card away. Now, the enemy blobs be approaching and damn well are there plenty of them moving on in. Uh, looks like more reinforcements are arriving, but still there are plenty more to get onto the field once we've killed off a few. Balance of power remains in the enemy's favor five minutes in, and we're starting to lose HP. Most of our knights are between half and 75%, and and a lot of our grave guard are starting to suffer as well. It's uh, it's gonna be close by the looks of it. It's gonna be very close. We're starting to get overrun here as well. We are also starting to drop zombies upon the biggest blobs of enemies that are moving on in, as we want the zombies to essentially hold the enemies back and blob them up uh, so that we can hit them with these winds of death. Granted, we don't have a lot of mana to do that repeatedly, and but hopefully with enough of them, then we can reduce the enemy numbers significantly. All right, and the enemies continue to overrun us between the zombies and skeletons. The enemy is also going to get a lot more mileage out of their grave guard with great weapons. And they certainly need that armor piercing. But the zombies and skeletons will provide the meat shield for the grave guard as they dish out the damage. I'm going to have to back out our black knights once again. But it does look like we did manage to see off that necromancer on his corpse cart. That was pretty darn critical. If he had made it into this blob, I'm not sure that we could have held him off. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, some of our Grave Guard get hit in the back by a unit of Crypt Horrors, and we're going to have to rush right back at them with our Bloodkin Thralls and our Lord as well. As well as more Bloodkin Thralls. This is the biggest threat on the field other than Krell and the enemy Lords, and Krell did a number on Edmund. Uh, contrary to what I was thinking, I did try to send him at him, and it did not go well. The main reason I did that was because, uh, well... Heinrich Kemmler just didn't want to fight one-on-one -on -one and kept running away, so Edmund wasted too much time. Tried to bring down Krell, but no chance until he gets uh, until he gets more leveled up. Oh, well, hopefully he can apply himself in dealing with these Crypt Horrors a little bit. Get that debuff on them as well, though the Spell Mastery and Spell Resistance Reduction probably isn't uh, of any help against the Crypt Horrors, especially as we have no spells to drop upon them. Really want to rip these guys apart, so three of four of our units of Blood King several units of Graveguard and all of our Black Knights and both the Aspirant and the Lord are trying to strike them down. And at the very least, the Cryptors are in critical binding. We also pop the Master of Beguilement on them to make sure they can't use their attack too well. But more and more reinforcements are arriving on the field. It looks like over here a single unit of Bloodkin together with several units of Graveguard are holding, but just barely. This one has begun to crumble away and these two are at about 30% HP as well. The enemy main line is starting to break through our zombies and Graveguard as well. And like I said, it's gonna be close. Man, what a glorious battle. I'm having a grand time here. Like I said before, and like I will say again, I love playing the Vampire Counts. They're my favorite faction, and I love playing against them. 
And gotta love these massive hordes of shambling dead. Even though it's uh, getting a little bit of taste of our own medicine and certainly working against us here. Another wind of death comes in from our aspirant through the enemy lines and uh, this was sort of a judgment call. We either could spend our mana on invocations of Nehek or we could spend it on those winds of death. And I decided that the enemy blob was big enough that we'd probably get more mileage out of popping that through the enemy blobs. I hope I was correct and we managed to pull it off. Alright, look at those Grave Guard holding. Some great shots of the Grave Guard, if nothing else. And it's nice to have a Grave Guard of centered army, even though it's, uh, let's say, struggling a little bit. The balance of power remains in the enemy's favor, and more of our units are beginning to crumble away. I tried to back these two Grave Guard up, but they're both crumbling and debilitated, and by the looks of it, will not be able to recover. We also don't have the mana to cast another invocation in the heck at the current time. I believe we've also used all but one of our zombie summons, so we're running out of those. And over here are zombies and graveguard are crumbling and we're running out of bodies all right well we've seen the dwarfs uh, sort of surrounded by our own units like this and now it's our turn as the graveguard and the zombies uh, both uh, surround and destroy uh, those remnants of our graveguard as well as get around them to hit those others that remain we are still holding off on this side as well and as another big blob moves in but at the very least the bloodkin thralls are still holding these ones have racked up 206 kills and are at roughly full hp though obviously they will eventually get to their healing cap and the other three are pretty much the only units that are okay all the graveguard are almost done for and it looks like krell has made it into our main lines as well and he's got 223 kills to his name though i would wager a decent amount of those are zombies since we did keep dropping zombies on his face Alrighty, Bloodkin Thralls, prove your worth to join the Ordos because uh, it's all going to be on you in a little bit. And just watching the spectacle, spectacle, a uh, spectacle here. Absolutely grand battle. We're also repeatedly using our Black Knights to cycle charge this blob to dish out as much damage as we possibly can. And it looks like it's going decently well at the very least. The Black Knights are still alive where the Graveguard are pretty much all crumbled. We just gotta make sure that we keep the Graveguard, to, or not the Black Knights rather, relatively together. As they just don't have the numbers anymore to act as individual units but have to be blobbed up. Alright, just about ready for a third Wind of Death. Probably the last one we'll have mana to cast in this particular battle. We gotta get it right through this blob of enemies. Gotta get it right through this blob of enemies. God, there you go, damn it. <laughs> I tried, guys. I tried. Alrighty. Well, as soon as that thing um, makes a decent bit of damage in the center of the enemy lines, we drop our Bloodkin Aspirant right in the middle and get our Black Knights to charge back on in. It looks like these guys, at the very least, are heav heavily damaged, and hopefully a few more charges will shock their morale enough for them to begin crumbling. All right, Black Knights, get back into it. Hit them in the flanks, hit them in the back, hit them from every side. Our lords are there as well. We have to force them to crumble. As this will decide the battle. And it will decide the battle because we can't face off against both sides of the enemy, as it looks like our Bloodkin are also starting to struggle a little bit. The one that got hit by Corell is down to half HP and has reached its healing cap, and we're trying to back them off. Unfortunately, the Bloodkin have a bad tendency to just start rampaging, and when they do, we can't back them out of these blobs. All we can do is summon the last unit of zombies on top of them. Or is it second last? I don't remember. Uh, close enough. And then hopefully the zombies provide some cover while the blood can back off towards the remnants of the slime. Two units of our eight Grave Guard remain on the field now. Two units of Grave Guard, six units of Hurt Black Knights, and obviously our Bloodkin. 
And of course, our lords do still remain alive, though it looks like uh, Theresia Gans is a lot more healthful uh, than our Lord Edmund here, who has reached his healing cap as well. Theresia has also been pretty good in providing support via that Tormentor sword, as well as he's wearing a glittering scale, so wherever he is, the enemy has a slightly lowered melee attack, and specifically against the zombies and the various skeletons. This is really helpful, as they have pretty darn low attacks in the first place. Oh man, I like how uh, Heinrich Kemmler's uh, color orders color or his color scheme matches our uh, Drakenhof color scheme or Drakenhof Templar color scheme. And though, frankly, with all the blood on uh, on Edmund here, he's looking more like a blood dragon uh, than a Drakenhof Templar. It's looking really good, though. Interesting that the horses barding doesn't get uh, blood on, and just the Lord does. But nonetheless. I like his armor a lot better when it's all bloody like that, it's appropriate. And that's the way it should be for a Blood Knight. Alright, how is it looking? Balance of power still in the enemy's favor, and there, that's our last drop of zombies. I tried to summon them one more time to try to hold, uh, to try to hold Krell off, and I do believe he did get caught by it, so hopefully he will be distracted just for a little bit longer in dealing with those zombies. Both our armies are very much down to the dregs of units at this point, and well, I said it was going to be a close one, and damn well is it going to be close. Alrighty, here comes Theresia Gans and our Lord Edmund once again. Edmund will head towards Heinrich Kemmler, who we will try to trap with the uh, Black Knights. The Necromancers have been spent pretty much the entire battle trying to escape us, but it's time to try to hunt them down. Otherwise, they'll keep healing the remnants of the enemies, and we are out of mana and can no longer heal ourselves. Uh, Theresia Gans should be able to hold the enemy in place with that Tormentor Sword, and this is a, a walking Necro, uh, so the uh, uh, so he's not going to get away, though his damn healing is still going to be irritating. And the real reason that we dropped Tormentor Sword there and instead of on the blob of enemies was to hold Kemmler in place and allow us to trap him. I really need to uh, prevent him from escaping like he's been doing for the entire battle. I'm really glad that we ended up moving Terezia against the Bloodkin Aspirant out of Wallach's army. This was our original Bloodkin Aspirant, so he's like level 30 or whatever. And is a lot stronger than, uh, well, a brand new one. Really, really helped out here. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had access to Wind of Death at all, and, well, let's just say it wouldn't have, uh, it wouldn't have been great. He's up to 529 kills, and damn, he's done fairly well for himself in this particular battle. Though he'll actually have to survive. <laughs> let's hope. Alright, our Bloodkin have moved in to help out, try to bring down these Necromancers a little bit faster. And it looks like this first one is ready to fall. Well, I guess technically second or third one, as we did manage to hunt a couple of down, a couple of them down over the course of the battle, like that one on that corpse cart, and closer to the start. Kemmler is still there, but he's having a pretty bad day as well, or at the very least because he's surrounded, though our Black Knights are beginning to uh, lose enough HP to crumble. And there's another Necromancer, but he's on a, a flying nightmare, and there's no way that we're going to, uh, uh, we're not going to be able to catch him. I mean, I guess we could chase him with the Bloodkin and then pop the Thrall... Uh, and we could pop the Tormentor Sword to stop him in place, but that's just not going to help us. We won't be able to do enough damage to actually bring him down, so... It is what it is. Our uh, two other units of Bloodkin Aspirants have caught uh, the other Necromancer here once again. And though this guy has a horse, he won't be able to get away. Got to get those Necromancers down. Especially Kemmler, but it looks like Kemmler will have to be last, especially because he's a lot more difficult to slay than the ne Necromancers. Well done, or base Necromancers. Well done, Bloodkin, though you are at half HP, and it looks like the enemy is finally starting to crumble away. The balance of power shifts fully in our favor, and regardless of Krell's presence, the battle is ours. Just got to wait until they crumble away. Sorry, Krell, but it was it was close. He did a great job. 275 kills and 23k damage. Ooh, what a fight. Oh, what a glorious fight. Now, 
if I was to play that, well, maybe not so much as to play it again. Uh, there was a decision to be made when starting this battle, whether we, uh, there's a little bit of a, we could have been a little bit, well, I mean, cheap, but uh, it wouldn't have looked as cool, in my opinion. The battle wouldn't have looked as cool. What we could have done is used these two plateaus and deployed between them. Since the enemy has no range units, we would have been able to force the entire enemy blobs, essentially, around our armies while we stood in the center like this. The enemy has no range and no damaging spells to drop upon us, so we wouldn't have been able... Uh, uh, we wouldn't have been threatened by it. That said, uh, if we had done this, the entire enemy blob would not have been uh, uh, would not have been far away from the enemy casters so all of the enemy necromancers would have been in there then uh, the enemy would have also gotten a lot more mileage out of its hex rates and cairn rates as we wouldn't have been able to uh, catch them nearly as easily and we wouldn't have been able to get a lot of mileage out of our black knights so uh, could have been an interesting way to fight this particular battle it would however have doubled tripled quadrupled whatever the effectiveness of every use of our uh, wind of death and we possibly would have been overcasting it and even bouncing it off uh, the uh, cliffside here to get you know, multiple hits into the enemy army. Uh, that could have been pretty devastating as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, when you're up against the well wall like this, you can, well, put yourself up against the wall and uh, make it easier for yourself in certain situations. Still, a really cool battle, a Pyrrhic victory, most of our army destroyed, but we do manage to pull it off. Ooh, wow, what a great fight. We got overrun by other undead. That's just fantastic. Look at the kill counts on every single unit. Three of our Graveguard fell. In fact, every single one of our Graveguard fell to a decent amount of them and do return. Uh, the dead arise again. We got 27k damage on this unit of Graveguard. 29, nearly 30k on this one. Very, very nice. 31, 22, 18, and... And 24k on the various bloodkin who uh, we all did manage to keep alive and we had to be very careful with them as well since they're high veterancy and we really want them upgraded uh, the bloodkin aspirant managed to dish out 135,000 damage and 18k damage on Edmund though we had to be a little bit careful with him uh, I'm gonna give him some items as a reward but his uh, helm of discord and the tormentor sword on the bloodkin aspirant came in really handy they also all the cycle charging from the various black knights leading them to deal about 20 to 30k damage it was pretty instrumental there as well damn three full stacks versus our graveguard army absolutely glorious now i think we have to heal i think yeah we're gonna heal this All right, I wanted to see whether they would attack us again, but it looks like they uh, it looks like they won't. Damn, that certainly took some effort. What a glorious fight. I was very happy with that. Anyway, enemy killed in battle, enemy killed in battle, a corpse thief for Edmund. Sure, spell resistance for the army for him as well. Not a bad pickup. This army is relatively revived, and I think I'll fight this one between the episodes just to kill off these units, as we can't risk auto-resolving with Edmund right now. We're definitely also going to need to a, upgrade the Abyssal Bastion here, though we do need the gold. Hey, there's that hero recruit rank upgrade. And we'll definitely need to build the Graveguard building here. I suppose it's easier to build it here in Nuln because we already have the first level and the growth is nearly there. Oh, there's Luan as well. And we need to be careful around here. Lovely. Lovely. At least uh, it's getting a little bit more interesting. Okay, this army can be cleared out because it's basically nothing. And... Just out of curiosity. Ah, damn. I was hoping you could reach Luan from all the way over there, but uh, yeah. Um, let's see what we've got. So if I fight this between the episodes and these two, it's the weak little battles that don't warrant an auto resolve. What do we have left? Wallach, you've landed. You have not 
Say to Luther Harkin here, uh, but you also can't leave the Awakening. Oh, huh. I wonder if the Witch Hunters spawn here as well or not. That would be curious. We should probably raise everything nearby as well. We could also... Oh, he does not like us. Ruler's Prejudice minus 130. Okay, he really doesn't like us. Uh, destroy the camp. I'm a little bit wary of them retaking the Awakening. We're gonna have to guard it until it's uh, ready to defend itself. Oh, there was A. Auto resolve that. Hopefully it's no damage. Teensy bit of damage, but nothing to be concerned about. And just make sure you heal up, because we cannot resolve again at the Pox Marsh. Not really worth sacking, so I guess we'll raise it. Just gonna have to be real careful about the awakening. And auto resolve this as well. And yeah, three more metal. We're back up to six. This will put us back up to nine. Raise. The one time I actually wanted you to move is, of course, the time that you do not, and... Ha! Huh, switching to stance didn't really do anything for us. Oh well. Uh, Pirate Hunter, buffs for fighting at sea and when fighting Vampire Coast, sure enough. Trickster shirt available as well. Do we have you with Mentor? No, we do not. And everybody should get Mentor. Aberash has it, and now you have it as well. Oh, they're both level 31. Aberash is caught up. Which I guess does make sense. Man. That was really fun. Uh, I had promised a quest battle in this particular episode, but now I'm thinking that uh, maybe we don't have time for it anymore. That was a really long fight. I ought to resolve this. And it's going to hurt the bloodkin a little bit, but, uh, well. Now, out of curious. Oh, you can't go back into encamp. There's not enough movement to adopt and adopt and camp. I thought you could uh, adopt it at the end of your uh, movement range. Huh, apparently not. Go figure. Well, either way, we need to head to Mount Gunbed. I guess we'll just sack Fallen King Mountain. Hmm. All right, you know what? Go right here in Hidden Camp to heal up. The path stretches onward. I was really banking on finding Ungrim here, but I fear he's going to be dead. Oh. If Grand Peak has fallen, Azag himself might be here. We need to make sure that Anarch is at uh, uh, Castle Drakenhof. Also, decent likelihood that these guys attack him soon, so he'll need to be prepared for it as well. Uh, we should upgrade his hideout. Should start upgrading his uh, horde, generally speaking. And we'll follow you along with you as best we can. Hmm. First of the blood dragons. Go here. I just want to make sure that Abarash can defend this guy if his ambush fails. So go right there. Alright, that's definitely enough, and we should be able to hit Fallen King Mountain, sack it, raise it, whatever, and then head down to Mount Gunbed and the yeah, a library there and afterwards. Edmund, you're going to fight Waldemar. You are sort of going to fight this. I mean, I guess we could... This is really not worth fighting. It's just a bunch of badly damaged already peasants. Mm. Also, we do have another tech available. Ooh, spell sword's finally available. Gonna have to take a lot of our uh, martial valor, unfortunately. And interestingly enough, this next witch hunter threat is going to pop up at a relatively inopportune time, as Nuln is very much surrounded. But on the bright side, it can very much defend itself as well. What we also do have to be wary of is we can't put one of these guys into the settlement right now, can we? Because the AI has multiple armies, so if one of them attacks Nuln or sieges Nuln, the other army could attack our main or one of our stacks, and the Nuln garrison, which is elite, wouldn't be able to reinforce. So either we uh, keep uh, one of these guys out, or actually keep both of them out, or get one of them while out of here. Hmm. So that's certainly something to consider. Anyway, I don't think there's enough time for another battle, so I think I'm going to call this battle here. Instead, or call this episode here. Instead, I'll fight the couple minor battles between the episodes so that we don't waste time. Next time, we head down to the library at Mount Gunbad, most likely activate the next Witch Hunter threat, and hopefully hunt down some of these uh, legendary lords just to acquire those blood kisses. We uh, didn't gain any this episode on... Wait... I guess it's only for living ones, huh? Because we defeated Heinrich Kemmler, but we didn't get a blood kiss for it.
No, which is a shame. Hopefully it's not bugged, because we still need a good 16 of them just to upgrade the Ordos, and then a bunch more to upgrade our various heroes and stuff, so, yeah. Anyway, anyway, gonna call it here. More Blood Dragons to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.